for the D1, D2, and junior college. It was pretty much always in the morning, uh, unless it was a lab class. So a class that had a lab, uh, usually it was a night class, just because if you had that lab, it's an extra hour which means it would push in the other class times that would be in the morning. Actually, yeah, it was definitely the only time. I had three labs, four labs in college uh, that were at night. Uh, I have one lab that was during the daytime. It was kind of like a mid. So uh, next, uh, for those classes specifically, you definitely don't want to take them in the spring uh, because of the travel schedule. So for those lab classes, um, you're definitely going to want to take those in the fall. You're going to want to meet with your athletic academic advisor. Um, and they'll help schedule your classes, make sure you're staying on course and uh, you're getting the minimum uh, credit requirements you need, progress towards your degree. It's either uh, five classes a semester or four, but um, I think the biggest difference between um, high school and college when it comes to the education part of it uh, is definitely the fact that not all professors lecture with PowerPoint and or use like visual aid. Uh, some will just literally stand there and start talking to you about what you read. And then after they start talking about what you read, um, they'll keep going a little bit more about other stuff that's not in the book they have to write down. So um, I used an app called Notability, uh, which was on my laptop, it's for MacBooks. So I don't know if it has it for Windows, but you're able to actually record the lesson, the uh, lecture, as well as type notes in it. And then I would go back and, and re-listen to it uh, whenever I would go back and review the material for the class. So that definitely helped me a lot especially going from uh, high school where notes were pretty much handed to me, regardless if I was in honors class or not. So yeah, that's pretty much. Uh... All right, so what is fall ball like? Uh, fall ball at D1, D2, when you first get there, you have individuals. So it's like small groups of guys. Uh, you're usually in the same position and you do like an hour of hitting with the coach or you do an hour of defense, whatever it is. Um, that's separate from the strength and conditioning. So that's when you first get there and then you do that until the official start date of team practice uh, Whenever the coaches uh, declare that is uh, They report it or whatever then you have a certain amount of days to practice as a team and then it goes back to individuals right before Christmas. So um, You inter squad almost every day uh, Whether it's the coach throwing BP and doing situational hitting stuff or it is like you facing live guys on your team uh, you guys go on, say, playing four innings or whatever with guys uh, starting on first and second in every inning that day, or second and third, or bases loaded, uh, one out, whatever it is. So they can uh, change the situation up throughout the uh, throughout the fall, make it a little more intriguing, uh, a little more fun, honestly, sometimes, because sometimes it kind of just gets to a lull uh, where people just start going through the motions. So. Co fall ball is intense because you play like 20 something almost 30 games uh, in the fall against outside competition on top of playing your own team so um, at my juco we played like i said 20 something almost 30 games against division one schools division two schools division three schools other junior colleges in the area um, it gave us exposure to the four-year schools as well as gave us an opportunity to go and try to beat somebody else who wasn't on our team so um, we really enjoyed that and I definitely enjoyed playing against outside competition. So the first time in three years of my college experience, um, playing against somebody in the fall other than my teammates, which was awesome. Uh, it's a great way to start building a camaraderie and a tight-knit group and that was the same team I ended up going to play in a World Series with, so that was awesome. Alright, so a typical game day uh, schedule in the spring on a Friday. Um, so 6.30, 7 o'clock start. Uh, I get up at 7 a.m., I'd shower, go get something to eat, go to class uh, from like 8.30 to 11.30. Um, a lot of times on Fridays, uh, professors tend to let you out a little bit early, so usually around 11 when you get out. Um, and I would immediately go grab lunch real quick, uh, head to the, uh, the training room so I can get some preventative arm care stuff. Um, and uh, I would take care of that for about 20, 25 minutes. And then I go to the ballpark and then I would uh, start stretching, getting loose a little bit by my locker, rolling out. Uh, then go to the weight room, start stretching out with some bands. Go to uh, the film room, uh, watch film on that night's starter for about 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes, just watching certain pitch he throws, uh, sequencing, kind of taking a peek at that, but I'm gonna review it later. So uh, then I go to the cage, get loose off the tee a little bit. And then I put headphones in and just start visualizing each of those pitches and me hitting them. Um, I do that for about 20 minutes and then I go back in and I relax for a minute or two. Um, I go back to the film room. 
I review the their top usage guys out of the pen uh, and what their tendencies and their pitches are. And uh, I do the same thing again. I go back out to the cage. Um, I do it for about 40 or 45 minutes now, but I only visualize for about uh, probably 15 to 20, like hard visualization. Uh, I'm always visualizing backspin through the middle, but not the actual pitches coming to the zone. Um, and then I would go back in, and believe it or not, I would take a cold shower. Uh, I know it kind of defeats the purpose of it, showering before you're going to go play, but it was something that relaxed me and cooled me back off before I went out and did BP. So I would shower, I would get changed, I would go find a quiet spot away from everybody and pray for like two to three minutes, uh, go out, start getting loose with my teammates for BP. And then as soon as that happened, it was game time. All right, so housing. Uh, my freshman year, uh, I lived with another freshman on the team. And we actually had 18 players, uh, baseball guys, in the hallway with us. Uh, we're either JUCO transfers or uh, incoming freshmen. And then uh, at the junior college, I had a townhouse. I shared with 30 other guys, but in reality, only four of us paid the bills there. But uh, it was a great time. Um, Tuscaloosa, my junior year, I had an apartment on campus with four other people. Um, because I was a transfer, a late transfer, a late commit, I kind of got stuck and pushed. So I was supposed to be with one of my teammates I was transferring there with, and they got mixed up, and then I roomed with two random guys, um, and then uh, a golfer, which was awesome. The, the golfer was a great, uh, became a great friend of mine, actually. Um, and then my senior year, I had a house off campus with two teammates, and then a former teammate who was finishing up his degree.